new DNA test kits that are on the market. And some of these kits claim to be able to tell you whether you are at risk for certain diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, especially after the FDA approval. But how much can you actually rely on those test results? I spoke to the head researcher from the Alzheimer's Association about how much you can actually trust it. On the Bustamante side of the family, we have seen Alzheimer's, quote, run in the family. In fact, one of the members took the 23andMe test. So when the results came in, we fully expected to see the gene for it. But there it was, no variant of the APOE4 gene associated with late onset Alzheimer's. Surprised, we took the results to the Director of Medical and Scientific Operations at the Alzheimer's Association via Skype. So there are people that are living with Alzheimer's that do not have a, one or two copies of APOE4. And there are people that are living with one or two copies of APOE4 that don't develop Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Snyder says the gene that 23andMe analyzes is a risk gene, not a determinant gene. You're three times more likely to get Alzheimer's with APOE4, according to the National Institute of Health, which makes people who have it a must for participation in clinical trials. It's really a need to have volunteers in clinical trials. But as for our family, it means while genes may not have contributed to Alzheimer's running in the family in this case, maybe the family habits did. Dr. Snyder directed me to healthy brain habits. But it's things like being physically active. If you're smoking, stop. Don't start. And the importance of staving off diabetes. But there is a link between people that have diabetes, and we've seen this both with type 1 and type 2, with later life risk for Alzheimer's. 